politics in the Netherlands has headed for a shake-up after a candidate from the far right won the country's general election. The leader of the Freedom Party, Heert Wilders, is known as the Dutch Donald Trump. He ran an anti-Muslim and anti-immigrant campaign, winning the most votes. It places him in the position of possibly forming a coalition government. But he faces a challenging journey in trying to push for a majority in Parliament. Speaking after his win, he said he would work to end what he called a tsunami of asylum and immigration in the Netherlands. 35 seats. The largest party in the Netherlands. We had a campaign so far. Now the voter has spoken. Please let's look for similarities now. And see how we can find a common ground. Because I don't think any voter in the Netherlands will accept for the largest party in the Netherlands by far to not have an important voice. People are really fed up. It has to be different and that is what they deserve. They are hoping that things will turn out differently than before. But of course it's about the measures you take. And the Netherlands has now voted en masse with 35 seats for the PVV. The policy on immigration and asylum really needs to be completely turned upside down. That things have to be different, that things have to be stricter. <laughs> Well, for more on this, let's bring in our eyes correspondent, Laurie Laird, who's monitoring developments from London. I got to see you, Laurie. So a victory, yes. that, a victory that no one saw coming in the Netherlands, not even the winner himself. Uh, tell us more about Heert Filders, the veteran anti-Islam uh, anti populist politician and the win that he secured. Charles, this is one of these these uh, the events that is a surprise, but not a shock. Eric Bielders has been a, a, a key force in Dutch politics for the past couple of decades. And his views on being anti-Islam, in fact, he would like to ban mocks in, in, in the Netherlands. At one point, he was banned from entering the UK because of uh, his accusations that he was inciting violence. 20 years ago, those views were thought to be outside the mainstream, yet we're seeing these views come into the mainstream of politics. So while this man has been around for ages and has been you know, knocking on the door of mainstream politics, we've seen it, yet the fact that his party has taken the most seats in these Dutch elections does come as a bit of a surprise. And, um, well, to try and understand that surprise, I understand he came across as much more moderate during the campaign, prompting his critics to describe him as a cuddly fascist. <laughs> cuddly fascist. What a wonderful term. He certainly did moderate his rhetoric toward the end of the campaign. And I, and, and I suspect, as you said earlier, his, his electoral victory surprised even himself. With 37 seats in the 150 seat lower house of parliament, he is well ahead of any of the, the, the next ranking parties. The next party behind him is 24 seats. And by the way, that is a right of center seat, a right of center seat whose leader has said, eh, we don't love Garrett Wilders all that much, but has not ruled out forming a coalition. I think Dutch, Dutch politics is filled with many, many parties. Coalitions take ages to come together, but I suspect that this coalition is his to form. He is much more likely uh, to form a coalition than a left of center or centrist grouping is to, uh, to form a coalition. That said, it's going to take months, I will bet, for this government to come together. And uh, one of his aims, Laurie, was to take the Netherlands out of the EU. He said he wanted a Nexit. Is that still his position to hold a referendum on that or has he rode back? No, he will have to moderate that to get a coalition together without a doubt. And remember, the Dutch are one of the Founding, uh, founding groups of the EU. But I think one of the things that's very interesting, and I've been with some of my French sources today, and they, it, it, his builders is 
engendering far-right parties across the EU. And in fact, the French contacts were saying, my word, Marine Le Pen in France looks quite moderate compared to the Dutch right wing. And we really are seeing a, a, a revival of the far right in so many countries in Europe, in the Netherlands, in France, and of course the AFD in Germany is becoming an electoral force. And, and given the, your, your, the fact that you're, you're telling us there that, you know, lots of other parties uh, that are sort of far right uh, seem to be uh, springing up across Europe and, and gaining some success. I mean, what are the consequences for the continent as a whole for the strength to the far right? Well, I think one of the things we will see should, and, I, and the key here really is, Charles, does Marine Le Pen, and we are very, we are a couple of years away from a French election, but does Marine Le Pen become a real voice in the center of Europe uh, for the far right? And at the same time, will we see the AFD in Germany become a voice? Now they don't have, uh, the AFD in Germany has some, uh, some control, or excuse me, some representation in some state governments, nothing at the national level, but they're certainly pushing the national dialogue. And I think if we see these groups start to work together, Europe's semi-open immigration will become a very, very different story. I think immigration will become even more uh, difficult than it has been over the past couple of years. We will also see certain things about government spending, whether the EU nations work together. These will be issues uh, that will be problematic if these far right groups or right of center becoming right of center groups come to the fore in these various countries. It's something to keep an eye on, Charles. It certainly can uh, affect the mechanisms of the EU. Laurie, thanks very much indeed. Laurie Laird is a RISE correspondent. She was talking to me there from London.